Have you ever wondered where the practice of water fasting originated? It's a question that takes us on a fascinating journey back in time. The concept of water fasting, or abstaining from food while consuming only water, finds its roots in ancient cultures. Let's start with India, a land where spirituality and health have always been deeply intertwined. Here, water fasting was an integral part of Ayurvedic practices, a holistic system of medicine that emphasizes balance in the body. In this ancient system, fasting was seen as a way to cleanse the body and restore equilibrium. It was believed that by giving the digestive system a break, the body could focus on healing itself, eliminating toxins, and rejuvenating the system. Fasting was also a spiritual practice, a way to discipline the mind and bring about clarity and enlightenment. From India, our journey takes us to ancient Greece, where fasting was also practiced for its health and spiritual benefits. Prominent figures like Hippocrates, considered the father of modern medicine, endorsed the practice of fasting. Hippocrates believed in the body's ability to heal itself and saw fasting as a natural way to aid this process. He advocated for fasting as a means of purifying both the body and the mind, a belief that resonated with the philosophies of the time. So whether it was the Ayurvedic practitioners in India or the philosophical minds in Greece, fasting was seen as a tool for attaining a higher state of health and consciousness. It was a practice that transcended borders and cultures, a testament to the universal human quest for wellness and spiritual growth. Thus, the practice of water fasting has been around for centuries, deeply intertwined with spiritual enlightenment and bodily purification. It's a tradition that, despite the passage of time, continues to find relevance in our modern world, offering us a glimpse into the wisdom of our ancestors and their understanding of the human body and mind. Did you know that fasting also has a significant place in many religious practices? Indeed, it does. For instance, let's take a look at Islam. During the holy month of Ramadan, Muslims worldwide observe a fast from dawn until sunset. This is not just about abstaining from food and drink, it's an exercise in self-restraint and patience, a time of spiritual reflection and purification. Now let's shift our gaze to Christianity. Here, the 40-day period of Lent is marked by fasting as a means to replicate Jesus Christ's desert fast. It's a time of self-examination and penitence, designed to help believers focus on prayer and growing closer to God. In both these faiths and many others, fasting is more than just an act of physical denial. It's a spiritual discipline, a means to gain mastery over one's desires and impulses. It's a time for introspection, for seeking a higher purpose. Regardless of the religion, fasting serves as a tool for spiritual growth and self-discipline. From ancient Greece to the 20th century, fasting has also been recognized for its therapeutic benefits. Let's journey back to the sands of time, to the ancient city of Pergamon, where the esteemed physician Galen walked the cobblestone streets. Galen, a figure as influential as Hippocrates, was a keen observer of the human body and its many wonders. He was one of the first to recognize the therapeutic benefits of fasting. Galen noted that fasting helped purge the body of excess and restore natural balance, a concept that would echo through the ages. Fast forward to the 20th century, a world of burgeoning science and medicine. Amidst this era of advancement, a German doctor named Otto Butchinger stands out. Butchinger, a former naval officer, found himself bedridden with severe rheumatic fever. Traditional medicine offered no relief but a 15-day fast did. This personal experience transformed Butchinger's perspective on fasting and its therapeutic potential. Inspired, Butchinger dedicated his life to researching and promoting therapeutic fasting. He established clinics in Germany, where patients were guided through fasts to treat conditions ranging from obesity to hypertension. Butchinger's work was revolutionary, illuminating the potential of fasting as a health intervention. His clinics remain operational today, a testament to the enduring relevance of his work. However, it's important to remember that while fasting can offer benefits, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Each individual's body and health needs are unique, and what works for one person may not work for another. Furthermore, fasting should always be undertaken with care, and ideally under the guidance of a healthcare professional to ensure safety. Thus fasting is not only a spiritual practice, but also a therapeutic one, endorsed by medical professionals throughout history. As we move forward, the exploration of fasting's therapeutic potential continues, ever reminding us of the wisdom of ancient practices in our modern world. Many notable figures have also adopted fasting for various purposes. 
One such individual is Mahatma Gandhi, the revered Indian freedom fighter, who often used fasting as a tool for political resistance. Gandhi's fasts were not just acts of political defiance, they were deeply intertwined with his spiritual beliefs, demonstrating the power of fasting as a tool for personal transformation. On the other hand, we have the biblical narrative of Jesus Christ's 40-day fast in the wilderness. This event is commemorated annually during Lent, a period of fasting and penitence observed by many Christian denominations. Jesus' fast is seen as an act of spiritual purification and preparation, underscoring fasting's role in deepening one's spiritual connection. From Gandhi's political fasts to Jesus' spiritual journey in the wilderness, these examples illustrate the multifaceted nature of fasting. It's not just about physical health or religious observance, but a tool that has been used to affect social change and foster personal growth. These figures highlight the diverse applications of fasting, from political movements to personal spiritual journeys. Modern science has also shed light on the potential health benefits of water fasting. Let's delve into some of these fascinating discoveries. Firstly, we have autophagy, a process that your body initiates when it's in a state of fasting. Autophagy is essentially a recycling and cleaning mechanism at the cellular level. It removes damaged cells and dysfunctional proteins, paving the way for the regeneration of healthier cells. Think of it as a deep cleaning service for your cells. Next on the list is improved insulin sensitivity. Insulin, as you may know, is the hormone that helps your body regulate blood sugar levels. When you fast, your insulin levels drop, and this enhances your body's sensitivity to it. This is crucial because it can reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, a condition closely linked to insulin resistance. Then we have the benefit most people are likely familiar with, weight loss. When you're fasting, your body needs to find a source of energy to keep going. So, it turns to the stored fat in your body. By burning this fat for energy, fasting aids in weight loss, and it does so without slowing down your metabolism, a common concern with many other weight loss methods. Finally, let's talk about cellular repair. When you fast, your body gets a break from the constant work of digestion. This break allows the body to focus on other important tasks, like removing waste products from cells. This is a bit like taking out the trash after a big party. It's an essential part of keeping your cells healthy and functioning optimally. These potential benefits are leading to a renewed interest in fasting as a health intervention. While fasting may not be suitable for everyone, and should always be undertaken with proper guidance and supervision, it's clear that the practice has some fascinating potential in the realm of health and wellness. Around the world, many cultures continue to practice prolonged fasting. Let's take a trip across the globe and explore how fasting intertwines with cultural practices. In the Middle East, the holy month of Ramadan in Islam involves a fast from dawn to sunset. This isn't merely a physical act, but a spiritual discipline aimed at self-purification and mindfulness of those less fortunate. Venturing to South Asia, Hindu festivals, such as Navratri and Ikadashi, incorporate fasting as a means of spiritual cleansing and devotion to deities. These fasts vary, from abstaining entirely from food to consuming only fruits and water. Now, let's move to indigenous cultures where fasting isn't just a practice, it's a rite of passage, a spiritual journey. For instance, in some Native American tribes, young people fast and meditate in solitude during their vision quests, seeking spiritual enlightenment and guidance. These cultural practices further demonstrate the global and timeless nature of fasting. To conclude, water fasting has a rich and diverse history. It's an age-old practice, deeply rooted in ancient cultures like India and Greece, where it was seen as a path to purification, both physically and spiritually. Major religions also incorporate fasting as a means of spiritual discipline, demonstrating its global relevance. In the realm of medicine, fasting has been recognized since the time of Galen in ancient Greece, and its therapeutic benefits have been acknowledged in modern times by practitioners like Dr. Otto Buchinger. Notable figures, from Mahatma Gandhi to Jesus Christ, have used fasting for various purposes, further underlining its importance across different spheres of life. The medical benefits, such as autophagy, insulin sensitivity, weight loss and cellular repair, are indeed promising. While anecdotes of healing stories abound, it's crucial to practice caution and seek professional guidance when attempting a fast. The rise of intermittent fasting reflects our ongoing exploration into the potential health benefits of modified fasting practices.